Hello, you beautiful people. So this is module three, and again, we're not getting into the uh, into the trenches quite yet. I just wanted another aspect that I wanted to cover before, you know, kind of looking at the KPIs and um, you know the, the script, the phases on a deeper level. So, like, essentially, if you look at my um, book, the Inner, Inner Game of Sales, and it's probably in Closer's Reader as well. I think what the I think what big a um, crossroads that a salesperson has is when you just realize you're not when you're not you're not selling somebody in order to sell them what you're really doing is like they've they're on that sales call for the very reason that they've they're at they're that they're where they're, they're where they're at because they can't get past and often there's a mindset blocker that's preventing them from getting where they wanted to go um and really as a salesperson what you're doing is like you know in a you know, in a perfect world is what you're doing is you're helping them make a transition from like a place where they're stuck to a place with that, um, you know, you can improve the quality of their life in some fashion. Okay. So um, the way that I would kind of phrase these three mindset pieces and what I did is I've got these actually a lot around my wall in my sales office and it helps me just understand kind of like where the, the, the prospect is potentially at when they, they hop onto a call. Okay, so this is quite woo-woo, but like it's, I know other high-level closers who do this, so it should, and it does kind of make sense. So the first one is, um, you know, when it comes to like asking a person to make a decision to change, you really should, when you know it's in their benefit, you really should, um, what's the word, ethically go there with that person if you know that it's in their best interest because you're going to be the subject matter expert of the um, of the offer of the product program or service that you deliver and if it's fairly obvious that they're limiting themselves with their current mindset or their current strategy then really what we need to do is we need to have you know a, you know a, 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 being a bit rude here like a set of set of golden balls on us and then like don't let um, them settle for their current version of themselves or their current limitations because they need us in that moment okay so but there's certain factors that need to actually kick in in order for that hypothesis to be valid and that is they've got to want to change themselves so if they're just not in a place they don't want to change um they've got to be able to afford it i.e like you know it's like a ten thousand pound program and like you know you're asking them to sacrifice you know buying food and stuff like that and it's just not in my opinion ethically right um obviously going into debt is fine because um, how are you going to change if you're just in a situation whereby you're just accruing just enough money to get by? Um, and they've actually got a benefit from your program or service, okay? So if you're selling snake oil, this is just going to trip you up all the time. So what I'm trying to say, guys, is the first point is when you um, when you know that somebody doesn't want to be in this situation anymore, they can, they can realistically afford it and they're going to benefit from your product, service or program. You've really got to sort of fight it out in the trenches with them, even if it means going ugly and objection handling, okay? But the next one is, um, especially in a modern day is selling, where people are getting sold so much more, so much often. There's a few people are like fearful of, well, a lot more people have been burnt out a bit more now than they ever have in the past. But also, you know, over thousands of years, we've developed a, um, a status quo bias where we're fearful of change. Again, also, we don't like, from a pride perspective, we don't like being sold, all right, or forced into a into an, an, an into a sale. So when I go on to calls, I always think to myself, like this prospect is could very likely be burned before. Is 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 probably going to have some sort of fear response to some degree, and also like if I just push them and it sounds like I want to make the money then it's just going to turn them right off, okay? So it's down to my skill set uh, in order to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of framing the way that I say things so I don't sound like I'm trying to sell them and I understand that they're, they're fearful, yeah? And then what I do then, guys, is um, I create like a mental image in my mind of a person running away from like a demon and then being a, obviously, up working for Sales Sniper and being a former soldier, I vi visualize in my head, like shooting that demon, um, that's um, chasing the person. And the reason I do this is because when it comes to objection handling, if you see yourself mentally as, as fighting for that person against their mindset and you personify and almost vilify their mindset, it almost form, it, trans, it, tran, it really changes the way that you perceive objection handling because you're fighting for that person because you realize they've got like a monkey on the back, a devil on their back, but they can't do anything about. Yeah, so it's up to you to help 
dismantle it, get it away, so that they can so they can escape from it. And I think that's a really useful sort of mindset hack that you can work on yourself, and it really makes the process of selling so much more ethical. Obviously, if you are in a position whereby you are actually helping people. All right, guys. So that's the kind of the mindset little module. I hope that resonates, and look forward to speaking to you all in the next chapter.